A while back, I asked what questions you guys had for me, and one question that I thought was kind of cute was, Mia, how are you always so happy? So here's the truth, though. I'm not always a beam of light. I have moments of irritation and sarcasm, and I've been in some less than stellar life circumstances at various points in my life. I have tons of frustrations and habits that contribute to me being less happy than I could be at times. I sometimes lack patience, like when someone interrupts me or oversteps what I feel is an appropriate boundary. There are things, and I say that to say that there are no rose-colored glasses. I also have a history of anxiety and depression. There have been periods of my life where I didn't necessarily feel happy, but I've always been considered a generally happy person. I smile a lot, I'm quick to get over things, and I can find and amplify the best in just about every situation, and I've been in some situations. There are some habits of happy people, and maybe even developed skills, that I attribute to this happiness. I'm going to share those with you today. Big picture thinking. Happy people tend to adopt a long-term perspective and focus on the bigger picture. They have a clear vision of their goals and they understand that setbacks and challenges are temporary, which makes them more resilient, another trait of happy people. Research has shown that having a future-oriented mindset enhances well-being and helps individuals to overcome obstacles with resilience and optimism. I don't know if this is something that I've trained myself to do or if I'm naturally inclined, but my default way of thinking is usually big picture thinking. I want to know the overall goal, the grand scheme effect and what it all means. I want the big picture. It keeps me from getting overwhelmed and cynical about the small stuff. I remember sitting at the kitchen counter with my mom as a kid while she cooked and asking questions about how things worked. I wanted to know everything she knew about the universe, the beginning, the end, the purpose behind why we do things the way we do them in society. I was very inquisitive and I wanted to know how it all worked and why, the big picture. Now this is gonna sound weird <laughs> and it's not at all logical now that I'm an adult and I have a better understanding of how things operate, but I remember as a kid pitching this idea to my mom that what if all of the planets are like cells and a much larger mega body? I was learning in science that the electrons spin around the nucleus of an atom and we spin around the sun. Everything is so circular and spinning and it just made sense to me. And if that was the case, then what was our purpose as these space atoms in the grand scheme of things? Relentless optimism. This has always been a trait of mine and it has served me quite well. It's funny because Matt, my husband, suffers from relentless pessimism. It's getting better and we like to say that we balance each other out because I will automatically be inclined to say, of course we can do this. And his favorite phrase that I finally broke him of was, I'm skeptical. I push him to open up to more possibilities and he keeps me grounded. Todd Herman, a performance coach and author, talks about wow over owl thinking. Wow meaning winning over worry, while owl represents overwhelmed by worry. He says that by adopting wow thinking, individuals train their minds to look for opportunities, possibilities, and solutions rather than getting trapped in a cycle of worry and negativity. Matt asked me just the other day, like, how I'm handling my oldest daughter getting so close to 18 at an age where she's going to be able to be in charge for herself pretty soon. How am I not panicked. <laughs> and at that time, she was on her first solo road trip to the beach with a friend, which is like a two hour road trip drive. She's 17. You know, she hasn't been driving on her own for very long. I was just like, I don't know. I think everything's going to be fine. I don't feel the need to worry unless I hear something to worry about. You know, even his mom was worried and she doesn't even live in the same house. It's that relentless optimism, resilience, over the past few years, I've taken a lot of business development classes and testing, and one test that I took asked me what I felt my strongest trait is, and I said resilience, 100%. I wouldn't be where I am today without it. You know, I talk about relentless optimism as like an overall trait, but there have definitely been some low periods where I felt that I had just lost, where I felt like just giving up. But those times rarely lasted more than a few days because of that resilience. That resilience is strong. It pops me back up. In my mind, resilience is like a close cousin of willpower. Research has shown that willpower is like a muscle. It can be worn down and fatigued like a finite resource, but it can also be strengthened through habits. If you're used to popping back up, it just becomes your default. Now, I will say this is a bit easier for me to do when there are outside forces at play, like getting laid off or depression or burnout or even rejection, because I don't necessarily feel like any of those things are my fault. And I'm pretty good at rolling 
dealing with the punches when it's not my fault. But one area that it's taken me years to build resilience in is failure. Seeing my failures as temporary at worst and learning opportunities at best. When I have a business failure, for example, I still feel deflated initially, but I write down everything that went wrong. I study it. And then the next time I do the same thing, I review those previous failures, those previous notes first. A flexible mindset. So if my space atom proposition didn't indicate this enough, I'm pretty open-minded. I have a flexible mindset. <laughs> uh, happy people tend to have a well-rounded perception of themselves, of others, and of the world around them. A study by the American psychologist found that the happier participants also had more cognitive flexibility and openness to new experiences. Happy people tend to avoid extreme rigid thought patterns and instead embrace complexity and nuance, those shades of gray, Things are not always black and white. There is not always a good guy and a bad guy or a right side and a wrong side. A flexible mindset allows you to have more positive and empathetic interactions with other people, which amplifies happiness by helping you to flourish socially. Being overly rigid in your way of doing things and seeing things is a recipe for disappointment. Now, if you're someone who thinks, well, that doesn't matter and has an I believe I'm right and to hell with those who disagree with me, or I'd rather be surrounded by people who think the way I do anyway, you probably have a rigid mindset, and I'm guessing you find yourself irritated by other people a lot, like right now. And that's kind of the point. Having a flexible mindset and being more realistic with the concept of who's right and who's wrong can just make you a happier person. You're not irritated as much, you're not mad all the time and frustrated, and you tend to have more positive relationships. Even if I disagree 100% and think I'm right and think you're wrong, I always wanna hear other people's viewpoints. I'm curious to know why they think the way they do because I know that very few people are intending to be bad or evil or wrong. Thankfulness. Call it a gratitude practice, but there's really no formality to it for me. I'm aware of what I have and I'm literally grateful for it every day. We're not wealthy. We don't have all of the luxuries that someone might who feels like they're living their best life. But oh man, am I grateful, like painfully grateful. I'm grateful that I'm not lonely. I've been miserably lonely in my life before, and it's the worst. I have Matt, and with both of our flaws, I am deeply grateful that we met by a total fluke of coincidences years ago. I'm grateful that I have such a good relationship with my daughters and that they're doing well. You know, we're not having to deal with major rebellion or drug addictions. They respect us, and we have a real relationship with them. I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful that I have a home that I love. It's a condo, it's small, <laughs> and sure, I would love to have a house someday with a young Hard, but thank goodness I have a place that I can vibe with and that I like because I definitely have lived in spaces that I did not vibe with and that just felt gross to be in sometimes. And I'm also generally thankful when someone does something for me. Like I always am sure to say thank you, I really appreciate that. I want people to know that they're appreciated because it's important to me. I don't know, I used to not be quite as grateful. I remember watching movies with certain characters who had these meek, good qualities that I took note of when I was a kid. And while I'm not meek, and I didn't necessarily see myself as being particularly good at the time, I found ways to practice at least being thankful. And now it's just become second nature. Practicing gratitude has been linked to increased positive emotions, enhanced physical health, improved relationships, and really just a greater overall life satisfaction. I'm not even going to mention individual studies because there are literally so many. If you're curious, you can just Google research on gratitude and the sheer quantity of results will blow you away. Self-expression. I remember as a kid, anytime my mom would get mad at my dad, she would get really quiet and she would grit her teeth. If I saw my mom's jaw clench, I knew exactly what that meant. And occasionally she would vent to me after I nagged her enough about why she was mad. And my response would always be the same. Why don't you tell him? She would go the passive aggressive route, which always drove me crazy, but would never actually say what she was thinking. And I never understood that. My approach was the opposite. You knew exactly where you stood and what I thought and felt at all times, to an actual fault. I mean, sometimes I was just bullying the world with my opinions. Um, I hadn't yet honed that flexible thinking I was talking about into an actual practice. Sure, I was toying with curiosity, which is a good first step, but it took me a while to apply that curiosity to an 
attitude and a mouth that accepted that I wasn't always right. I share that just to say that there is definitely a happy balance between all of these habits. Just self-expressing all over the place isn't necessarily a recipe for happiness either. But holding on to things, not opening a dialogue or releasing your gifts and bright ideas that you're holding tight in your brain isn't conductive to happiness. I have the strong relationships that I have right now because of my willingness to be open and honest. Now, with a much more attuned, flexible mind and active listening practice, basically meaning that I express myself, I say what I'm thinking and what I'm concerned about, but I also say it with an open mind and active listening for whatever the other side may be. You need both in order to really build successful relationships and also to be happier and not feel super confined. Now, if you don't have someone to let it all out to, then therapy is actually a great option for that. You guys know that I'm all about psychology and optimizing your mind for your best possible life. I've been open about my past experiences with depression and anxiety. And personally, I think that everyone should have therapy from like puberty on. There are just so many mindset tools and coping skills that aren't taught that can completely change how you experience your life. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and accessible to everyone. My biggest frustration and barrier with therapy has always been finding the right therapist. What are the odds of finding the right fit, the perfect fit for you by randomly calling a handful of local therapists? BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, they match you with a professional therapist that fits your specific needs. If it's not the perfect fit, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. And it's not awkward. There are no hard feelings. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com forward slash Mia Danielle. Clicking that link helps to support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off of your first month with BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps. Positive relationships. You really can't put a price on positive relationships. That's one external factor that can either make or break your happiness. At least that's been my experience and why I'm so grateful for the true solid relationships that I have today. Research has consistently shown that having positive social connections is crucial for happiness. And I'm here to say that I fully believe that research. Watching how Chloe responds to me and Matt has really had me thinking about the security that we draw from our relationships and why rejection and betrayal are so devastating. Feeling secure and safe is vital for happiness. And most people attach money to this definition of security, like having shelter, food, and a cushion of income. And while those 100% do contribute, I would say the relationships matter just as much. Happy homeless people do exist, usually in a community of other homeless people. I'm sure you've also seen wealthy people surrounded by miserable vultures who are unhappy. So this isn't a money doesn't buy happiness speech either. Research has actually shown that money does contribute to happiness up to a certain threshold. That threshold, by the way, used to be $70,000 per year, but with inflation, it's probably much higher now. But negative relationships are a sinking ship. Regarding relationships, I've shared before about oxytocin being an often unspoken form of self-care. You can see more about in this video of mine on tiny self-care habits. Oxytocin is called the love hormone, or you might also call it the aww hormone that's released when you see something that's incredibly cute, or you touch someone you love, or you hold your baby, or you watch cute kitten videos, I don't know. This is something that I would consider a happiness amplifier. It's easily achieved in stellar doses when you have really good relationships. An in-tune body. Being in tune with your body or the habit of checking in with your body is an over the top happiness booster. It's one that brings me from being generally a happy person to feeling energized and occasionally even elated with happiness for long stretches of time. First of all, you've probably heard that physical exertion in general releases endorphins, the body's natural feel good chemicals. It can also immediately boost your mood and reduce symptoms of things like depression and anxiety. Becoming in tune with your body is the next level of physical alignment. It's all about checking in and being aware of what's going on. Just about everything in life manifests in your body in one way or another. You've heard of having butterflies or heart palpitations when you're in love or feeling like you're going to pass out from standing up in front of people. You know, the many symptoms that you get from being sick, scared, or exhausted. This, of course, also includes an adequate sleep routine, which is crucial for your health and well-being. Sleep plays a vital role in your hormone regulation and mood balancing. Being in tune with what your body is saying and what it needs can be like the pivotal point for the right kinds of physical exertion 
our self-care, getting enough sleep, eating nutritious foods, and engaging in relaxation techniques. I've learned that fine-tuning my mood and overall outlook is easily swayed by prioritizing my physical well-being. And finally, happy people maintain an aligned environment. I shared a couple of weeks ago about creating an aligned environment and how it can be life-changing. I'll be sure to link that video right here. Basically, when you create an aligned environment, you're surrounding yourself with conditions and settings that support your happiness and well-being. We're talking about the mood of your physical surroundings, promoting social connections in your space, and also just supporting the flow of your daily functions. I know I've shared this a million times, but research has shown time and time again that the physical environment can significantly impact mood and well being. Just like with any animal, our homes are our habitat. We need a positive habitat in order to flourish. Literally, just by stepping into a room, you take on the energy and the vibes of that space, whether it is feeling calm and relaxed or stressed and anxious or like overwhelmed, confident, you take on all of these different vibes and emotions and states just by stepping foot into a room. Habitats are just crazy important like that. I have a free workshop that I'll be opening back up soon that talks all about how to create a holistic and clutter-free space so that you can really tap into creating this optimized environment. So if that's something that you're interested in, then be sure to check the link in the description so that you can get early access. So those are the big ones for me. Sure, there are definitely tons and tons of other things that make people happy and tons that are backed by research, things like having purpose or contribution or being being kind and altruistic. This list could really be incredibly long, but for me, I really wanted to keep it real and in line with my personal experience. Do I think that I could be happy living with my family on a beach somewhere, not contributing to society? Yeah, I probably could. You know, certainly once I'm retired, that's going to be part of the plan. But the nine things that I shared today are non-negotiable for my happiness at any stage. They were the same when I was a kid. They're the same that they are now. And I don't see them going away regardless of what happens in my future. These nine things are the core of what makes me a happy person. I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And I invite you to subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Until next time. 